that every time I would approach where I thought I needed to be or what my objective was, the goalpost was always moved back. So no matter how much I accumulated or attained, it never was enough. What is up, you absolute weapons? Welcome to the next episode. My name is Calvin Branson, and I'll be sitting down with entrepreneurs from all walks of life to talk about their successes, failures, and how to make an impact. This is none of your business. So firstly, thank you, Chuck, so much for being on the podcast today. I really do appreciate you taking the time out of your day and uh, being here with us. So firstly, for the listeners who don't know you, just tell us who you are and give us a bit of your background. Absolutely. First of all, Calvin, it's great to be with you this afternoon. I've been looking forward to our conversation of, since since the invite came in. So uh, again, I really appreciate you and uh, appreciate the opportunity to speak to your listeners. Um, again, I'm Chuck Cooper. My company that I have is Whitewater Consulting. We are a business consulting practice that uh, focuses on uh, providing HR services to small and mid-sized companies in the U.S., uh, a little bit of background on myself. I grew up in the Midwest in, in the state of Illinois and uh, grew up in a family that was uh, it was a small business owner. And so I've been involved in small business uh, ownership in six different companies over the years. And uh, we've had some great experiences as in a lot of ways we've, we've really been able to experience the, the thrill of victory. Uh, but we've also had a couple of opportunities where we've experienced uh, the agony of defeat as well. So, and, you know, quite honestly, we learned a lot from those uh, from those defeats that we went through. So it certainly has made an impact on me and ultimately has really led to the company that I have today and, and the work that we get to do. Okay. And just to make sure I heard that right, you said you were, you've been a part of six different companies in the past. That's correct. Yes. Okay. Or were they all in quite different fields or, or somewhat related or, or what was a bit of the details there? So it's a great question. Uh, it's been in a variety of industries. So the, the family owned business that I grew up in and, and then even the second business that we had was in the agriculture arena. Um, and so we've, I've been involved in everything from agriculture to financial services, to hospitality, to now to consulting. Okay. Awesome. So how did you, how did you eventually get into consulting then? What was the, uh, I guess the transition and the leading, leading up to that? How did that happen? It's, it's one of those, um, if you go back on my story and go back to the second company that we were a part of. Um, we had a, we had a very, very successful business for, uh, for a few years. We, uh, we, we bought the company and, uh, and, and it was a profitable from year one. And what was really interesting was there were six of us that were business owners. Uh, I was really young at the time I was in my late twenties and I'll, I'll be honest, I don't feel like I was really prepared for the level of success that we had. Uh, at that yeah. time. And so because of the success and because of the impact that it made on me, uh, we made some really, really poor financial decisions along the way. And b what that did was it put us into a place where we ended up having to sell the company to be able to get out from underneath the debt that was created. And so when I was, I kind of, in a lot of ways, I went from being on, on a mountaintop to being in the, in the deepest of valleys uh, in a matter of a few months. And wow. in that, in that, in that transition, in that fall that took place, um, I really, I learned a lot about myself and I really learned a lot about what I wanted to really do with the rest of my life. For example, how? What, what kind of values did I want to live my life by? Uh, what, where was my calling or where was my passion? And it wasn't to be a CEO or to be a, a big time success as a business owner. It was more focused on really serving and supporting. So as I, while I was in that valley, one of the things that became really crystal clear to me was that my passion is really working with and alongside small and mid-sized business owners. So that's kind of what's led me into the role that I'm and to my company today, where you know we get we work side by side with our clients, helping them navigate uh, their world of being an employer, and and also helping them navigate um, really how to connect and build trust back with their employees to have a, a more successful company today. Okay, that's very interesting. So, so having started so many companies, I'm sure you know this quite well yourself. Generally, you need an initial investment to get things started. 
What was that initial investment that you needed for, I think you said it's, it's Whitewater Consulting, is that correct? Correct. So, I, you know, at the time that I started Whitewater, um, I was really in a place where we, you know, I've gone through what, close to 30 years of my of my career at this point. Um, and so my biggest, I mean, biggest needs that I had was real, I just needed time, I needed clients, um, and I also needed to be able to, from a consulting standpoint, just be able to to have you know contracts or have some some uh, signed agreements, and so I needed pretty pr quite you know I'm sorry when I look at getting started, it was really focused in on really probably the first six months that I was there was a lot of effort and a lot of energy being poured into setting meetings, having conversations, and getting new projects started. And so that was probably my biggest investment that I needed was just an investment of time because I had the experience. Okay. It's essentially a roll up of everything that I've done the last 25 years is what I'm doing today. That's quite amazing. I mean, you know, I know you say the only investment you needed was time, but sometimes that is the biggest investment that you can make in your business. You know, I know a lot of people who are working in like a nine to five or a corporate job. And the only thing stopping them from starting their own business is time. If they had the time to be able to work on it, they would. So that's quite a significant investment. And on that investment, what kind of, and I know it's, it's just time. So it's difficult to, it's more difficult, let's say, to uh, put this down as easily as if it was money. But would you say you've had quite dis decent returns on your investment so far? Or has it been a bit slower than you expected? So what's really interesting is, you know, obviously I started the company um, in 2019. Um, so I was really just starting to get our our foundation built whenever the pandemic hit. And quite honestly, the, it, that could have been a moment in time where it could have been a death blow to the company. Uh, because when we went to shelter in place, a lot of businesses, you know, closed down. Or obviously they can they started operating in a different way. Well, from a consulting mm. standpoint, I couldn't get in front of my clients or get in front of my prospects. So we had to rely upon going into the virtual world of using Zoom and, and uh, platforms like that to be able to try to do our business. The reality is the pandemic for us was an absolute blessing from a business side because it opened up a geography that we were not able to reach before. So rather oh, wow. than just being focused on say the states of like the states of North and South Carolina, um, or even in the Southeast part of the U S it actually opened things up to where we could go coast to coast. And our clients absolutely promoted us to all of the people that they knew and our business actually boomed uh, during the pandemic. Okay, wow, that's quite uh, different to what you well, what most of the stories that I've heard from the pandemic. So that's awesome. Um, it's good to hear that there was some good that came out of that period, you know? Oh, it's it was a really, really tough period to go through for I mean, for for a lot of individuals, as well as a lot of families to go through. But that is a silver lining that came from from that time. Yeah, for sure. And and you did touch on this already in the in the intro, you said that you feel like you have found your passion. This has been a roll up of all of your life's experience. Maybe, you know, having experienced so much and learned so much um, throughout your career, maybe there's some insights you can give into finding your passion. How, you know, because there's often, there's a lot of talk about finding your passion. What is your passion? How do you find your passion? Uh, you know, et cetera, et cetera. Do you have any, I don't know, tips, advice, any little nugget that you have specific about passion that you could maybe share or something that you've learned? I think it goes back to um, you know a couple of things. First of all, I think that one thing that helped me really learn what I was what was important to me and where my passion was was really spending time being introspective. And that was when I went through that moment from being on the mountaintop going to the valley. That was one of the things I spent probably six months just really analyzing a lot of who I was. Uh, really, again, what made me, what brought me joy um, and where I felt like I had a lot of my gifts were in. Uh, the other thing that really made a big difference on that, that was reaching out and finding people that were going to, that could be either a coach or be a mentor to me. And at that point in time in my life, I had no one around me that could help 
in that area to really be a coach. And so I, I reached out and I ended up having three different coaches around me at the, at any given time. And they really served as guardrails to make sure that I didn't make the same mistakes again, but they also affirmed a lot of the qualities that they saw in me and really felt like, you know, they identified areas that they thought I was really strong in. And I was able to focus in on those and, and really continue to work on those, develop those over, over time to where it really became a, a passion. Yeah, yeah, for sure. Them pouring into you, it helped you get there a lot faster, I'm sure, as well. Absolutely. Yeah. And, you know, speaking about you went from the mountain to the valley, in life, we're all going to face challenges, right? Uh, no matter where we come from, no matter who we are, no matter our background. What would you say is one of the biggest challenges you face so far? It could be business related. It could be personal. But there's no doubt that both of them, whichever it is, they would have affected each other. For sure, um, because I think again, I go back to that to that chapter of life where we were in that valley, and I think the thing that I, I always go back to a lot of my life, I've spent with a focus in front of me being uh, monetary rewards and monetary goals, mm. and so a lot of the things that I did was just strictly focused on money in general and the accumulation of those assets, and what I found by by focusing on that was that every time I would approach where I thought I needed to be or what my objective was, the goalpost was always moved back. So no mm -hmm. matter how much I accumulated or attained, I never, it never was enough. And so I ended up working with my coaches to be able to help shift that mindset to where we started looking at really placing essentially a, a value on, or a currency on other things in life, whether it's, the, the relationships that I have with my family or the relationships that I have with my clients and the network that I've built over the years. And that, that has probably been one of the things that's given me the greatest joy and the greatest fulfillment is being able to see the, the relationship with the, with my network and my solution providers and the relationships that get built with my clients. Um, those are things that I really have, I can't put a real mo monetary value on, but from mm. a personal side, it really has really given me a lot of peace and contentment to know that we're making a difference and the, and the work that we do today is really not, it's not the same as the work that I've done in the past. Um, if there was days, Calvin, where I would come home from work before, um, before I had my consulting business and I would be absolutely drained and wiped out. And right with the work that I do today, there's not a day that goes by that I'm not energized even at the end of the day. So I know that I'm know where I, that I am where I'm supposed to be, and I know that I'm I'm fulfilling that purpose that I have. Yeah, that's amazing to hear. Like the fact that you're able to work a whole day, and you know, when you did before the consulting business, you'd be so drained. Whereas now, you actually feel more energized. You know, it's obviously a clear sign that you're, you're doing something that you really love, which is quite unique, exactly. I think. I don't think, I think a lot of people struggle to find that in their life. So it's it's definitely quite an achievement in and of itself. I would say it, it, it was, it's been quite the journey for me to get to that point. It's not something that came easy. Um, it was something that we had to continue to stay focused on. And and again, having, having others around you in your uh, community around you to help give you support and guidance in that. Has, makes a world of difference. Yeah, I can imagine. And so if you if you had a time machine, right, let's say, for instance, that those kinds of things existed, and you could go back in time, is there anything that you would change so far? Well, the, the one thing that I would definitely change is, and, and this is one of the things that I love about where I'm at right now, because I get to mentor a lot of younger people today. Uh, and that is having that mentor, having that those coaches around you early on, uh, are is something that's incredibly valuable and uh, and I think that will it helps again prevent you from making the, the mistakes that can be life impacting uh, and it, it helps keep you in the center of the road so on your journey you know you can you know you're safe and you can stay within a, a set of of, uh, of guardrails essentially to protect you so I think that's one thing second thing is that you um, you know, as you look at, as I look back on life and fast forward to where we are today, um, 
again, taking money off the table, I think is a big piece uh, for a lot of people, because I think I'm not the only one that's in that same boat. We, I think if we take our, put our focus on things that really bring us joy and bring us happiness, uh, we can, we can find ways to, to make a living and create a living just focusing on those things. So yeah, I'd, I'd say one is having coaches around you too, is making sure that your the values that you're living your life by are, tr are true to who you are because it, it makes a world of difference. Yeah, I can imagine. This isn't something I actually ask everyone, but I feel like you might have a good story that you might be able to share here. Is there a, a time in business, uh, maybe a story that you could share where you really felt challenged or maybe out of your comfort zone and, and you could maybe touch on how you navigated that? I will share a couple of things that, and it's interesting because I've been working on this for the last couple of years. The, if you would have, if you would have asked me the question three years ago, four years ago, would you ever consider writing a book or doing public speaking? For example, the answer would be a definitive no. Um, when, when 2020 came along, I knew that one of the, the, my areas of weakness was from is communication and specifically in writing. And so I took it upon myself to get up and challenge myself every day to begin writing and not with the idea I was going to write a book, but just to improve in that area. And what we I started that in January of 2020. Uh, we did that for about four months. And at the end of four months, we took a look at the writings that we did. And we actually had some ideas on maybe creating that into a book. So along that journey from 2020 to 2022, we, we actually started doing the writing. We had the, a book that was actually published in 2022. And then we transitioned into doing speaking engagement since then. So I feel like that as a, as a, as a individual, as a person and as, as a leader, that, that we're all on, on a journey and that we don't ever reach a, a destination. So regardless of where I'm at in my life, I feel like there's always opportunities to learn and to grow and to become better. And when I look at my, you know, at the stage of life that I'm at, where I've got three grown kids and I've got eight grandkids today, I want as part of my legacy that I want to leave them, it is focused back in on the, no matter who you are, where you are, how much success you have, you've always got more that you can do to, to improve. And you've always got more value that you can provide back to your community. Would you say you're happy at the moment? I am as happy and as content as I've ever been in my life. I love that. So yeah, the only thing I would, that would add on there, Calvin, was contentment has been something that I have searched for for probably three decades. And it wasn't up until probably about a year and a half ago that I actually reached a point where I felt like I had, I had, I'm getting close to being there. Yeah, yeah. It's something a lot of people search for and never find. And as you just said, it can take a very long time to find it. So yeah, it's, uh, it's something to hold on to. And what would you say is the, you know, in, in life, you're obviously going to get advice from a lot of people when you face challenges, you're going to, um, you know, consult those mentors that you've spoken about. But sometimes the advice isn't always, uh, you know, what it seems. What would you say is, potentially the worst piece of advice you've ever gotten? Oh, goodness. <laughs> yeah. That I have to give some thought to. Um, I would say probably when I go back to my early days, um, I had I had people around me in my early, in my early years that they were, they never really understood the the importance of being able to manage risk and so i was i was in a a group and in a uh the people that i had around me were focused on essentially rolling the dice every day that they went to work so they would they were taking risks that were not necessary um, and they were taking risks that were outside of their really their ability to even to be able to repay in some situations. And that was kind of the, the model that was set for me. Um, and I think that's, that's one of the reasons that I had to go through the, 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 uh, you know, the fall to, from 
you know, in my early, in my late twenties was to be able to understand that I, I couldn't live my life that way. And so I think that's probably the greatest or probably the poorest piece of advice or poorest way uh, of experience, uh, life experience that I've had that, you know, has really, it impacted me for several years. Okay. Awesome. And so you've obviously come a long way with uh, many different businesses. Uh, you know, you've been running the whitewater consulting for how long did you say you've been running it for? I think you said since 2019, 2018. Right. So with 2019 is when we started. So we're coming, we'll be coming up on four, on five years. So what's next for your business? Uh, do you have a, a vision of where it's going and is there a game plan to get it there? So what's really interesting, I've, I've set this business up to really be a lifestyle business. Um, I have no plans to retire. Um, I'll be 60 here in a few months. So the, the reality is my wife and I both, we both run businesses out of our home. Uh, we both are as happy and as content as we've ever been before. And we absolutely love the work that we do. So we really have no plans at this point to, uh, to retire or, or slow down. So we want to just continue to do what we're doing today. And so with the work I do with Whitewater, I feel like the work that I do, I can do this for as long as, you know, as I've got a breath. And so that's what my plan is at this time. Awesome. They say, uh, the longer you can work, well, I've, I've heard this a few times, the longer you work, the better, you know, keeps you on your feet, keeps you young and keeps your mind engaged. The, I think that's the big thing is it keeps your mind engaged. And, and I think that it's a fascinating time right now to be in the HR space and, and to be in, in involved with small and mid-sized companies because so much has changed. And, and the fact is, the, the rate of change is just going to continue to become faster and faster as we move forward. So a lot of our entrepreneurs today, they're going to need a coach or a mentor to come alongside them, help them navigate, you know, building that business. And if you're in my seat, what would you ask yourself and what would the answer be? If I was sitting in your seat. Mm -hmm. If you were the host of the show. If I was the host of the show, I would, I mean, the one, the thing that I would ask is what can I, what can you do to prepare to be a more effective person, a more effective leader in, in the next 10 years? And my, my answer to that question would be to really focus in on the, the level, your level of emotional intelligence, being able to understand what emotions you have, what triggers you have to understand why you, why you uh, respond or react the way that you do, uh, just to be able to become more aware of, of who you are. And I think that will allow you, if you do that, and the reason I think it's so important is because I think with the younger generation coming up, being able to understand that emotional, have that emotional intelligence, and then being able to really connect and relate to them on a personal level is going to be something that they're looking for. And that will help you become more successful as you move, you know, five years, 10 years down the road. I just, it's just going to help you become a, a more effective leader. Of course. Okay. And lastly, you might have a bit of a similar answer that you just gave to this question, but I'm going to answer, ask it anyway, just in case, you know, you have something else in your heart. What is one message you would want to give to a young entrepreneur? You've given plenty of, of success nuggets, if you will, um, which have been extremely valuable, but is there one that you feel stands out above the rest? I think the big, the big piece here is the, that, that journey of being an entrepreneur is not meant to do it alone. Um, and I, and I see, and I talk to, I talk to entrepreneurs almost every day. They've got ideas and, and they want to go out and take that step out and start a business. But a lot of times, and I've experienced this so often over the years, is I've talked to people that have had an idea. They wanted to start their business. They just didn't do it because of some fear or something that prevented them from moving forward. They got to the end of, of later stages in life. And that was one of the greatest regrets was I wish I would have started that. I wish I would at least tried. Um, unfortunately, they didn't do that. So I think that, you know, being able to be that entrepreneur, 
stepping out and starting that business and at least giving it your best shot, but have people around you and, and, and manage your risk. I think there's some things that you can do, um, you know, to be more successful, really to help increase the chance of success. Yeah, of course. I mean, it's, it's always easier when you have people walking the journey with you, you know, you can lean on them and, and, uh, press into them for advice and guidance and support for sure. There is, um, there, there's this in the U S there's some organizations here in the U S that again, I, I know, you know, and I, I keep coming back to the fact that in the U S because the fact that all of the work that we do is pretty much in the, in the country. So we look at organizations here in, in the U S like score, uh, which is part of the small business administration. They've got great mentors and coaches that will help people, entrepreneurs put together business plans and help them really think through the steps that they need to go through to have, you know, to have a more successful launch. Uh, but then there's also peer groups like Vistage or like C12, uh, where as business owners, you can come together and kind of form your own uh, board of advisors to be able to, you know, have a sounding board to be able to bounce ideas off of and get counsel from them. Because that journey of of, as an entrepreneur can be really lonely when you get to the top. You don't have a lot of people that you can talk to and bounce ideas off of or that you can trust. And so th I think that's the reason that it's always important to, to have people around um, to be able to be a, a sounding board and keep your sanity. Yeah, for sure. Okay. And just before we sign off, now's your chance to give your business a bit of a shameless plug. Just tell the <laughs> listeners where they can find you in your business. So our website is whitewaterconsulting.net and uh, I'm, we're all over social media. I would, I would love for people to reach out and connect with me on LinkedIn. That's where we spend the majority of our time. Um, and my email, if, if anyone would like to reach out, is chuck at whitewaterconsulting.net. And uh, we, love, we love hearing stories uh, from entrepreneurs around the U.S. and around the world about their journey. And uh, we'd love to be a resource for them. Awesome. Well, once again, Chuck, thank you so much for your time. Uh, yeah, that was awesome. And I, I honestly can't wait for the listeners to, to hear all of that. So yeah, thanks again for your time. I really do appreciate you coming on the show. Um, I'm sure you're very busy, so it means a lot. Well, thank you so much for your time and uh, it's great to be with you. Thank you for watching and listening to None of Your Business. If you haven't already, please subscribe to our YouTube channel. And if you want to follow us on Instagram, TikTok, Twitter, and all of those beautiful places, you can find the links in the description below. I hope you enjoyed this episode. Until next time.